Yeah, there are greetings, fellow citizens of the internet. This is, of course, Richard, and today I bring you sort of a prelude kind of video. Uh, I wanted to record this very quickly, talking about a series which I am going to be putting out relatively soon, uh, which is going to revolve around this new game, Mist 4 Revelation. It is an amazing masterwork of a game, uh, which came out in 2004. So it is going to be somewhat dated graphically and so forth. So just saying that right off hand, right off the bat, so that it, you know, to hopefully ward off at least some, oh, why are you playing this? It looks so terrible comments. Because the point is that it holds up very well, all things considered. So that having been said, this is an amazing game, uh, which is the fourth in, uh, series of games known as the, um, well, they are, they are the Myst games. Uh, following after the original Myst, which was, um, that was, uh, big way back when. Uh, it was, it was basically the first defining, um, point-and-click adventure game. And so it was absolutely massive and, it, and it's an amazing game it doesn't hold up quite as well as the others but still definitely you know given the context of the time is still awesome um I, that came out in like 93 or something it was really early um all things considered for what it was um but this is this is uh, Mist 4 again, 2004, like I said, and it's um, it's continuing with an ongoing storyline. So I will provide just a bit of backstory here. Uh, I'll try and explain it as succinctly as possible without going into too much of the you know rich, deep mythology that has evolved around this series, which is incidentally truly amazing. Um, and most of which I actually know. Um, but to put it simply, uh, way back when, uh, there was an ancient civilization of, um, people who were actually able to, um, do this crazy thing where they would actually use very specific types of paper and ink and ways of writing and language and so forth in order to actually be able to describe a world in a book and then use that book as a portal to, tra to you know, be transported into that world, sort of taking the whole metaphorical bit with writing to the whole another level and that kind of thing. But um, these worlds were called Ages, and uh, the books were generally called Linking Books, um, and linking books were used to, as sort of a short way of getting from one age to another versus descriptive books, which would actually describe a world, define it, and, you know, be the end-all be-all. Like, that's, that's what's actually describing the world, then the linking book would just link to that world. Um, which is probably <laughs> more in-depth than I need to go, but, um... You can tell that I am very into this series. It's absolutely awesome. I was basically raised playing these games. Um, it, this was a big part of my childhood growing up. I have very fond memories. Uh, but then, uh, so basically, there's this guy, Atris. E every every summary and description of a plot line is better when you started off by saying, there's this guy. Um, but there's this guy, Atris. Um, who is one of the few last remaining descendants of the Dunny, um, who were the civilization of people who were able to, the, to write these ages and do all these crazy things with books and linking books and things. Um, he's one of the last remaining descendants, and he carved himself out a nice little lifestyle um, in this world that he wrote for himself called... Mist. It's basically sort of his paradise island, uh, which would allow him to write in his library and uh, connect to all these different ages and so forth. And uh, so he lived there with his wife, Catherine, and raised two sons. 
um, and everything was happy and wonderful. Um, and his sons, Cirrus and Aknar, grew up, you know, in this wonderful haven of excellentness, and all was well until one fateful day when, unbeknownst to Atris and Catherine, uh, the boys were actually quite nasty characters, and uh, they actually sort of got out of hand eventually, and actually trapped Atris and went on a huge plundering rampage through all of his ages, and that was rather bad news all around. And so that that, that sort of was a big catastrophe <laughs> on many levels. But um, what ended up happening in the end was both Cirrus and Akinar ended up blundering individually, separately. They both blundered into different uh, almost simultaneously, they both blundered into different trapping ages. Um, these snares that Atris had left in order to stop thieves and plunderers. Um, so he... they were inadvertently trapped in these ages that were designed to look really nice, pretty, and... you know, they, they, they must be absolutely amazing, they should go loot them. But in reality, they were nothing more than traps and designed specifically so that you would not be able to escape from them and get back to do any more harm. So, Atris um, was still trapped, but then Sirius and Akdar were also trapped. And it's at that point that the first Mist game begins. Uh, you play as the Stranger, uh, that is to say, this faceless, nameless, uh, every man sort of character, uh, who never speaks or anything. Think Gordon Freeman, only more enigmatic. You never see him, you don't know anything about what, who he is or what he looks like, or even if he's a he. Um, and you're really referred to only as my friend by Atreus. Uh, but so, you arrive, uh, having found a missed linking book, and... Explore the island, um, find all of the mostly destroyed and uh, ravaged ages, and you know sort through them for bits and pieces of puzzles and so forth. But um, in the end, you do end up actually pretty early. You meet uh, Cirrus and Aknar in their respective uh, trapping ages. Cirrus is in a red book, and Aknar is in a blue book, and they can communicate with you, and over the course of the game you find bits and bobs that allow them to communicate better until they finally give you a solution to a puzzle, at which time you can actually communicate, you, you end up finding another book which allows you to talk to Atris. And Atris, you know, once you connive with him, uh, eventually you get to the correct solution of the game. But, um, at the end there, Atris with a heavy heart, does what he feels he needs to do, and you go back to Mist Island, and the two linking books that had trapped Cirrus and Aknar were both burned. And so it's like, ah, ooh, geez. But it does not end there. And that's more or less where this game actually does pick up. Uh, because Riven and Exile, the um, second and third games in the series, sort of go in different directions, and they explore different pro plot lines and so forth. Uh, plot lines, yes. Uh, but this is the first game that really gets back to um, Cirrus and Aknar and what happened to them. So, um, without too much further ado, I think I'm going to go ahead and round this video off and probably record an episode or two. Uh, we shall see. Uh, also, another thing, I'm going, you'll probably notice that this is a wonky resolution. It's actually uh, absolutely the best resolution that I could get. Like, this, this, this is dated enough that it's, like, <laughs> look at these resolutions. That's, that's not a lot to work with. Uh, and also, you'll notice that there is no windowed mode, so I'm actually playing this in full screen. And on my screen, which is, like, probably 16.9 or something, 
It looks horribly stretched and pixelated and so forth. I did a test and it looks like it's actually recording at the right resolution, but on my screen it looks really wonky. <laughs> so just for the record. Um, and I haven't yet figured out if I'm going to be able to force it into a windowed mode using some external program or something, or if there's a better solution. Uh, but I might end up needing to play this way, uh, which would be okay. It's still not that bad, and as long as I'm recording it okay, that's fine. Um, like, that's the important thing. But, so that's pretty much where that is at, and pretty soon... I will probably get started. So, um, I think I've mentioned more about more or less anything I needed to. So, let's get on with DIS Play! Head on to the first video, I'll have a link in the description and probably an annotation like right here or something, if I can remember to do that. Go ahead and click it. Click it now. Aren't you ready to start the series? Why are you watching this video? Well, maybe I haven't posted the first video yet, so maybe maybe that's why. Well, I, I, I probably will have if it's been a decent amount of time. I don't know why you're not clicking, clicking the annotation that I will have put there. If I haven't put the annotation there, uh, uh, let me know in the, in the comment section below, because that's kind of important. Alright, I'm going to assume that by now you're not going to have clicked, uh, or you have clicked, and you are not listening to this. So, I will say goodbye for this video and look forward to the new series, new DIS Play, coming out very soon.